Okay, so we're ready to try drawing triangles instead of points. So triangles add a significant layer of complexity to, to what we're doing. So we're going to stop working on our colored points example, just save it. And we're going to instead go to um, the book, go into chapter three now, and then we're going to go to the hello triangle example. This is the one that we're on. So what's going on in this example that's different? We have the same shaders roughly that we had before. The main thing that's happening is inside this main call, we're getting the canvas and GL. We've moved those out to other functions and initializing shaders, we've moved to another function. They have this new init vertex buffers. We'll take a look at that in a second. And then they have clear, and then they have draw arrays. Um, and instead of GL points, we have GL triangles. But the change is not so simple as that. So there's this in here and this means that we're going to draw in vertices in this case three our triangle has three vertices one two three and we need to specify all of them together in an array in order to be able to draw this triangle so let's go take a look at init vertex buffers because this is where the real work is happening so here we've just declared the vertices so these are at some location 0 0.5 negative 0.5 negative 0.5 right and so if we change these things let's just try changing one and, and see what happens the shape of our triangle is going to change, right? Because we've changed the location of these vertices. So this is hard coded right now. We're going to make some changes to that. We have three vertices and we have these things in an array. This float32 array, this is not a this is telling JavaScript we want it to be precisely floats with 32 bits. Why? Because that's going to be the kind that we want to pass to GLSL. There's a couple of ways to do that. Um, we'll, we'll probably change that around in the future, but right now this is hard coded in the, in the explanation here. So we, we're going to have to do something new. To pass these things into the GPU, we need to create a buffer. So that's what this call here is doing. This GL create buffer. This is making a buffer on the GPU. If it's not immediately clear to you what this buffer is, then you might want to take a look. Um, at the text near page 72 in figure 3.4 in the textbook um, and it's going to talk about how to create these buffers. Indeed the front part of chapter 3 talks about this. So then after we've created a buffer on the GPU then we need to bind that buffer to GL array buffers. So there's a couple of choices here. We're always going to be using GL array buffers in this class uh, unless you decide to use indexed elements which I I'm going to not suggest throughout this class. So we're always going to be using GL array buffers. This call to buffer data actually sends the data that we defined here, right? So this is our definition, sends it to the GPU. So this is sitting on the CPU when we define this. This is in JavaScript on the CPU. And in the same way we previously had a call that sent our data across using uniforms or using other things, we now have this buffer and it's going to send vertices array to live in a buffer array on the GPU. Now, which buffer array? So far, it's just a buffer array. It's not connected to anything. So in order to connect it to our A position variable, we have to get the position of that A, a position variable, right? So this is the pointer location to it. This is the same call we previously had. We were getting the pointer location to A position. So this is the same as what we were doing. But now, instead of calling GL vertex attrib, we have an attrib pointer. So this is the part, this, this, the function name has changed. We used to just be passing a single attribute into a position. Now we're going to pass a pointer to, the, to this. So we're going to pass a pointer to this. And which, which is going to be the pointer? This is going to be the pointer for the buffer that we just created. So we're taking the buffer we just assigned, assigning it to um, the A position pointer, which points to the A position GLSL variable. This two right here is saying that we have two elements per vertex. So for this vertex, we have an X and a Y. And for this vertex, we have an X and a Y. So later we may have X, Y, Z, or we may have X, Y, Z and the normal direction XYZ and the UV coordinates UV. So there may be multiple pieces of data per vertex. So we're saying right now we have two. 
Our data is a float type, and these have to do with an offset and stride if you're using interleaved. And I'm going to suggest that you don't use interleaves this quarter. It's going to make your life easier. So for right now, we're just going to take it as it is. And then we're going to enable this um, attribute array. And this is what, what's happening in all of this uh, is setting up in order to be able to draw the triangle. This draw arrays up here in main, right, after we initialized our buffers and we cleared, this draw arrays is actually doing the draw. So as we did before, I'm going to try to clean this up um, a little bit. So we're going to, rather than saying that we're going to init the buffers, we're going to try to change this around so that we can have a function which will draw a triangle at the position that we want it to draw. Okay, so how are we going to make this function? So I've commented out the previous init vertex buffers. And down here, instead of draw arrays, I'm just going to call draw triangle, and I'm going to specify the triangle I want to call right here. And then I've renamed this init vertices to draw triangle. I take the vertices in, comment out my definition of vertices since I've passed them in. So vertex, and the only other thing that I've had to do, here's my original call. I was passing vertices through this buffer data call. So now, because my data is coming in as a JavaScript array, I'm going to convert it into a flow32 array before I try to give it to GLSL. And I've moved my draw arrays down inside of the call that I've made here in, in draw triangle. So now I have a draw triangle function. And indeed, when I reload my page, I get my triangle back. So what's the advantage here to having it split out into a separate function? Well, here I've added several more calls to draw triangle, and there's no problem. Now I've got three triangles on the screen instead of just one triangle on the screen. And this is what we want to have. We want to have some kind of call to draw a triangle that we can call multiple times so that in our clicked program, we can click and draw triangles at whichever is the position that, that we want to draw. It. So now we want to save our work here, and we're going to keep this draw triangles function and we're going to pull it across into our previous program. So I'm going to make a new uh, file for triangle.js, stick this function in there for now, and then we're going to try to integrate it into our previous program.